In this video, I'm going to discuss Huckle's rule. So not all rings with conjugated pi systems are actually aromatic. In fact, some are anti-aromatic. So an aromatic compound, like we talked about in the last video, has more stability than you would expect. Anti-aromatic compounds are much less stable than you'd expect. Most of the time, if you're able to actually isolate it, it's dangerous because of how unstable it is, so they can be explosive and react very readily. But how do you determine whether it's aromatic or anti-aromatic? So determining aromaticity versus anti-aromaticity. So step one, count the number of aromatic electrons. And what I mean by aromatic electrons is electrons that are part of that conjugated pi system. So in benzene, you have six aromatic electrons. in the compound down here, which is cyclobutadiene, you have four aromatic electrons. Okay, step two. A compound is aromatic if it fits the expression four n plus two equals the number of aromatic electrons. N here is an integer and specifically a whole number one. So for benzene, like we just had, if it has six electrons that are part of the aromatic component, so I would say 4n plus 2 equals 6. So 4n equals 4, n is equal to 1. So that means benzene is aromatic. Cyclobutadiene, 4n plus 2 equals 4. 4n equals 2, n equals 1 half. It is not aromatic. But notice what would work for an anti-aromatic expression. Rather than 4n plus 2, you would have 4n equals 4, right? In that case, n equals 1, right? So the third step to determine if something's anti-aromatic is that a compound is anti-aromatic if it fits the expression 4n equals 4, where n, again, is a whole number integer. So cyclobutadiene fits that expression. <clears throat> So I want to run through just a few examples of different aromatic or anti-aromatic compounds to see if we can determine whether it is going to be aromatic or anti-aromatic. So number one, we got anthracene here. This is a series of three benzene rings. 
all of these are conjugated. If you went through and drew the resonance structures for this, you would have all of these electrons as part of the conjugated pi system. So in this case, our number of aromatic electrons is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. <clears throat> So 4n plus 2 is equal to 14. 4n equals 12. That means n equals 3. So this one is aromatic. Another thing to notice here is so far both with the benzene and with the anthracene, we've had an odd number of lone pairs of electrons. Benzene has 3 lone pairs of electrons in the system. Anthracene has seven. So that's another thing to, to notice, and that's it fits in with this expression of 4n plus 2. If we have an odd number, it's worked out for us. If we had an even number, like cyclobutadiene, it was anti-aromatic. So we'll see if that trend continues with our next example. All right, this is going to get a little more difficult to draw, but I'll do my best with drawing it. So we have an eight-membered carbon ring here. There is resonance between all of these, so we do have a conjugated system. Our number of aromatic electrons is eight, and we have four lone pairs. If we try to do 4n plus 2, 4n equals 6, so n equals 3 halves. It's not aromatic. But if we do 4n equals 8, I'll get n equals 2, which checks out. So this would be anti-aromatic. Last example here is naphthalene. We have 10 aromatic electrons, five lone pairs. So it seems like it's going to be aromatic here. But let's check. So 4n plus 2 equals 10. 4n equals 8. <clears throat> n is equal to 2. So this would be an aromatic compound. So in the next video, I'm going to discuss aromatic compounds that are not necessarily benzene derivatives, so aromatic compounds that have nitrogens or oxygens inside of the ring, and determining whether those are aromatic, anti-aromatic, or in some cases they're non-aromatic if they don't have a full conjugated pi system inside of the ring.